Well, hello Rovers. Today we are expecting a big storm. This is really the first proper blizzard we're going to have of the season. We're expecting about nine inches, maybe as much as a foot. It's going to come in very hard and fast. And then sometime after midnight, it's going to change over to more like rain. And, but it'll be freezing rain. And these are the things that worry us because freezing rain, when it starts to build up on the electrical wires, puts tremendous strain on our mast, our service mast, that brings the electricity into this building. So in order to support that, I plan to put a guy wire back from the mast to that eye bolt that you saw me put in just a little while ago. The issue, we live on a little island and I went to two electrical wholesalers. They do not have the proper clamp that goes on that service mast. I went to both of the big hardware stores in town. They don't even have aircraft cable, 3 16 aircraft cable. The most they had was 1 8 aircraft cable, which is really too light for what I want. But it wouldn't matter anyway because they only had two, count them, two 1 8 saddle clamps or, or cable clamps to support that wire. So that was a no, no go. Luckily, uh, many of you probably know that I'm a sailor and I had just refitted my old sailboat before I took it across the Atlantic. So all the wires are called stays that support the mast were replaced and the old ones I still have and guess what? They're 316 stainless steel. Now they're not aircraft cable, they're actually a, a higher grade than that but, or a stronger grade than that but they, um, they don't bend as easily. So I went and uh, investigated the whole thing and one of the uh, senior instructors at the, the college where I, I work at occasionally uh, said, you know, he has on several occasions just taken the wire, wrapped it a full turn and a half around the mast, brought it back, clamped it, and then secured it to the anchor. So that's what we're doing today. Trust me, I'm not overly happy to do this. I don't like doing things like this, but it will be perfectly acceptable. However, I will switch this out as soon as the province of Prince Edward Island gets the proper rack and spool clamps to go on that mast, which I hope will be in the next week or two. Anyway, I have to crack on with this because we only have a few hours before the storm actually arrives. Okay, that's not going to come loose. You can see as I pull on that, the service conductors are beginning to move. And that just kind of tells you the tremendous weight that's hanging off of this service mass as it goes out to the first post. Now the first post was put in by the utility and it was put in very well. It has a guy wire coming down to the, to the ground. So I know it's taking the load right from the road but that's uh, about 85 feet between the intermediate post and the service mast here. And uh, although it's within code, it's, it looks so weak to me, especially given, given the concerns that I have with high winds and uh, freezing rain. Uh, when that happens, these conductors, they start collecting ice 
and a little bit of ice forms around them almost like a big sausage and then as more rain comes along more ice builds up and it can get quite heavy and then with winds that are blowing and we're expecting winds in excess of 90 kilometers an hour uh, tomorrow well I mean you mix those two things together you put a tremendous amount of strain on these service masts so that's why we're uh, going through this exercise here now we'll just tighten down these nuts here and that'll prevent the turnbuckle from loosening which happens as a result of vibration okay that's nice and tight we are in really good shape okay so let me just explain what's happening here so the guy wire is going around the mast at that clamp now it has three saddle clamps on it and the saddle clamps uh, the rule is don't saddle a dead horse so this rope right here this bit of wire rope that's considered the live rope and the bit where it terminates at the end there that's considered the dead end so don't saddle a dead horse means the saddle portion of that clamp is on the live portion of the wire and the little u-bolt is on the dead end of the wire and then uh, three is considered a very safe factor with these you have to use the right size so this is 3 16 stainless steel wire rope and those are 3 16 cable clamps so we come down here this is a, a terminal meant for a sailboat because there is absolutely no 3 16 wire rope available in Summerside. I went to four different places, they didn't have any. One eight aircraft cable was the only thing I could find. It was just a little too light. And on top of that, I could only buy two cable clamps for it. They're all out. Uh, almost everything, the shelves in the hardware stores are pretty much half empty. Uh, and this has been an issue pretty much for the last year or so. It's, uh, it's really difficult to, to do construction under these uh, conditions. So anyway, I've reused a piece of uh, stainless steel uh, wire rope from my sailing days. I had changed the stays on my old sailboat. I kept the old ones and here I am reusing it. Uh, because of the sizes, I've had to use a couple of these shackles uh, just to get around the size issues here and then this stainless steel turnbuckle is a heavy duty one. It's designed for loads probably, I don't know, probably three or four times the breaking load of this wire. And of course, the eye bolt is a half inch eye bolt and you uh, saw me install that in the last episode. So I'm pretty happy with this and it is done because of the impending storm that we're uh, expecting in the next 12 to 24 hours. Okay, we are all set for potential heavy weather. Well, there we go. Just in the nick of time, the mass is supported, the snow has started, and now it's time to go pick up Mrs. Rover from work. These are not great conditions to be out in. If I didn't have to pick up Mrs. Rover, I would not be out driving on the roads in these conditions. Well, the blizzard is over and it wasn't anywhere near as uh, grand as Environment Canada had projected, which isn't really a bad thing. But what happened was the snow came down and it came down pretty heavy for about six to nine hours, at which point the temperatures had risen, the snow then became rain. It was freezing rain just for a short period of time. And that's what we were worried about. We were worried that the rain would turn to freezing rain, cover the, uh, the electrical wires coming to this building in ice and cause perhaps some uh, damage to our electrical system. That didn't happen. We were prepared, but it didn't happen. And then shortly after that event finished, it was just straight rain. So straight rain on that much snow turned the snow into slush. And then the next day I tried to remove it with 
the snow beast right behind me, but really it was slush and the snow blower is great at removing snow, but slush it struggles with. But we did manage to get it pretty clear at the driveway, but our temperatures have been so mild. Even right now, we're pretty much hovering right around freezing and our, our ground, uh, you know, it's, it's ice, it's slush, it's soft, it's hard to maintain a driveway under these conditions. Anyway, uh, it's amazing that we're in the first week of February and we're still enjoying these incredibly mild conditions. It's not always like this here on the east coast of Canada, but this year is certainly a bit of an outlier in that respect. Now remember, the best way you can help Rover's Rest is by subscribing and sharing our videos on your social media. So until next week, thanks for watching.